you know, you've heard a lot about convergence and StoryLab was developed for the age of convergence. So really thinking about how do you take content, which is essentially the currency of a convergent world, bringing the point of transaction and the point of engagement closer together, and use data and insights to fuel that into an idea that we then connect across platforms for the audience in the right way, place, time, et cetera, to create value. So we, everyone loves a framework. I would say the framework, actually, that was set up in the beginning by Liz and Lee would be quite appropriate for how we think about everything that we do. Um, and some of the things that Eric talked about, like collaboration, content, Jimmy Kimmel, he, he actually shows up in here too. Apparently everyone works with Kimmel for a great, great, <laughs> great content initiative. Um, but this is really how it comes to life for us. And so we really think about content thought leadership. So working with our clients, not just in a media capacity, because content isn't actually just regulated to media. Content is every single image, video, word, message that a brand puts out. So we actually work with our clients to think about what does a roadmap look like across their organization. And we do it collaboratively with the creative agency, with the media agency, with the PR agency, with the digital agency, with the social agency, and every other programmatic agency and every other agency in between. Um, as well as the client stakeholders. So how do we figure out how to create the most efficiency, the most effectiveness, and the right optimization of the investments that they're making and how we make them, and then how we actually take that forward into the future, which then leads into all these other things like content partnerships, like original content or content um, newsrooms and studios. How does that impact the way we work with influencers? And some of that may be through content par partnerships and amplification, or some of that may be actually anchored in a partnership with influencers, which is really how um, part of a big part of the best day ever, which is Chevy. Um, and GM was our first client at the Story Lab. And so there's a lot of pride that I take in standing here and talking to you about them today because not only is it kind of a long road, as many of you know, probably when you onboard a really big client like General Motors, um, but also very often in our business do we get to organically experience the results of our work. So while this was mostly my team out of, of Detroit, um, I got to participate obviously from afar in LA. Um, but I happened to be in New York on the morning of, of April 1st, 2015, which is April Fool's Day. And as I walked down the street at 7 a.m. to a meeting in Soho, two people in black t-shirts ran up to me with best day ever on their shirts and, you know, Chevrolet. And they offered me a bag with dry bar gift certificate, and I, of course, love dry bar, so I was like, oh, this is awesome. I didn't take it. But it had exactly the intended effect, which is it changed the course of my entire day. It made me happy. It made me think differently about Chevy. And by the way, I'm not a millennial, so unfortunately, don't tell anyone, but... You know, I, I'm a little bit older than a millennial, but it, so it had a spillover effect, right, which was exactly the intention, which was to take an audience that has generally has apathy for a brand like Chevy and try and make it mean something, to actually brand act like Eric was talking about, change the course of the conversation and do so by taking a holiday that is essentially perceived as being, you know, a little prankster-ish, maybe slightly jokester in a way that is more negative than positive, and flipping that on its head. So we need people to reappraise the Chevrolet brand. And Chevy is actually now an award-winning brand for safety. And you've probably seen their commercials where they're shattering perceptions. And all of that was meant to basically happen around this time. So the Spark and the Malibu were both relaunching on April 1st. Commonwealth, who was the creative agency, was coming out with a new campaign directed around possibilities and, um, and find new roads, which was their campaign platform. So we knew that we had this sort of very unique window to create something that was high impact, to appeal to this audience of millennials. And I know everyone talks about millennials. And it actually makes me crazy because there are 85 million of them. You don't talk to 85 million people the same way ever. But this was sort of a group that collectively didn't define with Chevy or align with what, what they believed the brand to be. So we could talk about them as millennials. And that means we needed to create a communication with them that was not only aligned to sort of the optimism of the brand and the brand values and what they actually authentically do represent, but also in a way that they want to interact with the content in places where they want to act, interact with the content. And so we did just that. So the idea came to life in that we, we moved from this cliched holiday to the best day ever. Surprise, you know, for as cliche as it sounds, sort of surprise and delight. Um, and it turned out well. We had 12,000 surprises, actually, around the world, it, because we actually did some in, in the UK with Man U players. 
Um, but essentially, we, we took every single channel and every single partner that we had access to, and in 20 days, put this entire thing together. So now we'll show you a video. Since 2013, Chevrolet set out to find new roads, becoming the most awarded car company in the world. With vehicles launching April 1st, we still had work to do amongst a savvy millennial audience with only 17% excellent opinion of the brand. We leveraged our media relationships to share surprising acts of kindness nationwide. We put ourselves in the backseat and connected to consumers organically, and it worked. By changing a day typically reserved for pranks into positive acts, we drove 70% increase to Chevrolet.com, resulting in 98% positive brand sentiment across social channels, particularly amongst millennials. For Chevrolet and for millions of people across America, April 1st, 2015 was the best day ever. So collaboration played a huge role in this, right? We collaborated with Commonwealth Creative Agency, Fleischmann, who was the PR agency, the media agency, which is Kara, and us. And essentially, we knew all of the platforms where this audience were for Chevy, and we went after them in those places. We partnered with Jash, which is um, uh, an influencer-based comedic um, production company, and we partnered with them and reached out to some influencers who didn't typically align with the Chevy brand already, so we, we reached out to them. Um, we also partnered with Husay, so Alec Baldwin you saw, Olivia Mann you saw, so you, you see a lot of the celebrities showing up. And we actually then canvassed the marketplace, we aligned everything, we created an eight hour live stream, in the, we moved into the YouTube studios for, for basically 12 hours to create a real time feed of all this content coming in, which again, in, to the point of conclusion, we learned a lot of things along the way, which is that's really hard and you should absolutely pre-tape some of your content. Um, but it was still a great experience and, and it was all about the partnerships that we created and how we leveraged that media which was really impactful, and then how we leveraged those influencers to help us amplify the message. And the results were actually really powerful, and you saw some of the results, but the, actually my favorite results for this whole thing are, obviously our objective was to connect with millennials, so we saw that 75% of the engagement actually came from people who are under 35, so that sort of hits point number one. We saw a business result, which was there was a, the video says 70%, I think it ultimately ended up being 65%. Um, of an increase to the site visits on that, in, during that time frame. Um, there were 600 comments per minute during the, point, uh, during the peak times of the live stream, so that meant people were actually engaging, and 80% of the traffic actually came from mobile. So I think that was like such a high point, because the reality is, is the consumer journey has changed, right? When you're trying to talk to this audience, going and trying to do something just on Jimmy Kimmel isn't enough. Even though Jimmy Kimmel's amazing, we all love Jimmy Kimmel, but he, is not the only place where we should be having that conversation with these people, and we need all of the support of the influencers, and we needed the celebrity talent influencers, and we needed all of those things for Danica Patrick to show up at a gas station, present you with a free gas card. All of those things needed to happen, but we also needed a way to house that and how to distribute it and amplify it. So we learned a lot of things, and this is really how we did it, which is the partners, um, and this really just talks about us, but again, it really was a collaboration. Um, we were mostly in charge of the creative, the talent, the influencers, and the media partnerships in terms of who we leveraged and how we leveraged that. We started with the data, so we actually already knew where, you know, we're very clear on our audience, so we knew where they were, do where, you know, where they were, what they were doing, and what they were interested in. So we crafted both the surprises and the distribution using that data and insights. Um, we definitely paid distribution was a big part of this, but I'll talk in a minute about you know, you don't have to have, I'm gonna use this number, it's not the number, but I'll just use it generic. Millions and millions of dollars to do this. Um, people get very caught up in numbers and I don't need it showing up in a tweet and then Chevy calls me. Um, and then technology, right? So technology has fundamentally changed the way that we can connect with consumers. So, it, you know, it, does, it could be Micmac, it could be Wattpad, it could be any of these things have changed the way that we can build and amplify programs and storytelling and story starting with brands. And that's what's so exciting about the, the, the world that we live in because for us, doing a live stream, moving into YouTube studios and doing a live stream for eight hours is a really huge commitment. And what we realized is you need satellite trucks outside of every single surprise that you do so you can upload the video and actually get it and collect it and harness it, edit it, approve it and repurpose it. Like that's a huge undertaking. Technology allowed us to do that, but we have to learn a lot about the technologies as we go. And that's what's so exciting about where we are now. 
So our key learnings were core team. You need internal champions at the, at the client and you need champions at the agency and there has to be very clear swim lanes, right? You see it all the time. Agencies are, all of it's becoming very muddled, right? Who does what, what core companies belong to whom, who owns content, right? How you deploy, all those good things. And so when you go into a program like this that has such specific, um, not only time, but also specific deliverables and what we all need to do, you have to be very clear about who's doing what. Um, using data to help, help, to help tell the right story, I think, you know, I could pound, everyone's going to talk about that, and I could pound that on, over the head all day long, but if you aren't, if you're just doing stuff for reach and frequency anymore, you've missed the boat, and it's, you know, you should probably fold it up and leave. Um, a good idea can be scalable. So again, that goes back to the money thing. You don't have to have millions and millions and millions of dollars to do this kind of thing, right? It's about, frankly, if, I, if you would have let me at it, right, there probably would have been subsets of those 85 million millennials, right? We've done a use segmentation where we have four different very distinct audience profiles of millennials. It's like taking France and trying to target France, right? You don't target France. France, the French are multifaceted people. Um, so ideas are scalable based on the audience you're trying to talk to, and that's what's so important. That's where the data and the insights all come into play. Um, and then a plan for the distribution. Just because you build it doesn't mean they'll come. Um, again, it doesn't have to be million, mil millions and millions of dollars, but if you understand your audience and what they're doing and what their needs, motives, behave you know, motivations, behaviors, et cetera, are, you can certainly have a conversation with them and you can invite them into the conversation so they don't tune you out. How was that? I went fast. <laughs> 